Redding, California, a small city in the shadow of Mount Shasta, West Coast Americana. It was here that young Tara Smith grew up in a bustling family of six. Well, I think all the other kids looked up to her as being the oldest. She was a uh, um, she was very loving to her siblings. She was definitely definitely firstborn as far as being responsible and making things happen and being a good student. But she had a really a really fun, playful side. Tara's hamming it up. Just really just really loved here. life. From the basketball court to homecoming queen, Tara embraced every bit of this life she could. And then came August 22nd, 1998. Tara was grounded that day, so she had been spending the day with me doing some errands and shopping. Do you remember why? Do you, why, why she was grounded? I think she had snuck out. Um, she wasn't always, <laughs> she wasn't the perfect child. There isn't such a thing. <laughs> she was a typical teenager. We had our fair share of trials with, you know, discipline and, um, trying to keep her on the straight and narrow. And so I think she had snuck out with some friends. So um, she was kind of impulsive sometimes, didn't always think things through. And so she was grounded and spending the day with me. I came home and dropped her off with her little sister and went to work, which is only a few miles away. And Tara had a car and a license and she was supposed to be to work an hour later. And then she just didn't show up for work. So I called home, and um, her little sister Sierra was here and said that she'd gone jogging and said she was only to be gone for 20 minutes but didn't come back. And so at that point, I came home and just drove all the roads that I thought she might be jogging on and couldn't find her. Then we started calling her friends, um, called it an ex-boyfriend, and nobody had seen her. Later that night, a friend called back and said, I think she was having an inappropriate relationship with Troy Zink, her um, Taekwondo instructor. Zink was 29 years old. She just recently took up Taekwondo before she went missing. You know, she loved the yin and the yang and uh, Eastern philosophy, all that really appealed to Tara. After Tara disappeared, Troy Zink was questioned extensively by police. He told police Tara called him at work, asking to see him. He said when he showed up, she asked him for $2,000. He said he told Tara he might lend her some money if he knew it was for, and she got angry. He said he ended up dropping her off on Old Oregon Trail, and she went jogging. He gave us the same story that he dropped her off about a mile and a half from our house, two miles, three miles from our house, and then had gone up to a, a hill nearby called Hang Glider Hill. He says he went up to Hang Glider Hill and was praying for the last five hours and had just gotten home. Praying? Praying. Which? For five hours. Right. But police never found evidence to prove Zink harmed Tara, and he was never charged. He denies any involvement. I can't imagine what it's like. Uh, how frustrating it must have been. Very frustrating. We feel like they really gave it their all for probably six months to a year. And then it was a, an important case for another year or two. And since then it's shelled. It's completely cold, stone cold. A cold that persists to this day, almost 25 years later. What did that do to your family and your family life? I think we did as well as anyone could have done. I think we stayed close. Um, we had our faith in a lot of ways. Like it never felt like we properly mourned or grieved her in some ways because for so many months we hoped she would come back. It was a very gradual process realizing she was gone. And I, on the other hand, I felt like within 48 hours of her disappearance um, that we'd not likely see her again. I think Marilyn held on to hope far longer than I did. I was convinced that she was gone from almost the get-go. Nearly a quarter century on, the Smiths know the chances of finding out what happened to Tara grow slimmer with each year that passes. There are plenty of cold cases out there that 
may never be solved. We just hang on to the hope that ours won't be one of those, <laughs> that it will get enough attention. We feel like Tara deserves justice. If you have any information about Tara's disappearance, please contact the Shasta County Sheriff's Office at 530-245-6135. She just had a really good heart. Tara had a really good heart. I think the world is a better place for her having been in it, and I can only imagine how much better it would be if she was still here. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.